for Summer Heat, presented by Fat Hands, right here at Lucas Oil Speedway, Wheatland, Missouri. It's time to do nothing but serious horsepower and get down and dirty. You're watching the Lucas Oil Pro Pulling League here on ESPN2 and spectacular high definition where available. Ken Stout and Leslie Mears bringing you all the action from the Dixie Chopper Summer Heat presented by Fathead Sunglasses. And welcome to Wheatland, Missouri. This place is spectacular. Lucas Oil Speedway and we're bringing you all the super mod action. This is the multi-engine tractors and these guys are bad to the bone. And it's all about how much horsepower they can make and hook up to the track. All right, let's go into our super clean track facts. This place, it's called the Diamond in the Dirt. It's a 3 8 mile oval track. They do a lot of great racing here, but we're worried about a full pull here today. Let's go back down the crash. Much like Supercross, motocross, off-road, even rally racing, track conditions play a major part of the equation in these poles. You got the sun beating down on the track. We had a bunch of rain last night. This all plays into how the guys are going to be able to pull down the track. They come out here. You'll see them as they get up to the starting line. They feel how tacky it is, how soft. You're going to hear a lot of drivers talk about how soft the conditions are. And with the moisture underneath and the sun beating down, it's going to be a really tough day out here today. All right, Crash, get off of that track because we're about to send the first one down. Michael Stewart with a down and dirty tractor out of Paris, Tennessee. This one with four automotive style engines on it as we take a look at our order here with the super modified tractors courtesy of Lucas Oil. Keep your eye on LD Nation and the Indian Outlaw with his three T-64s and also that exotic configuration of Don Nelson and the Texas Bullwhip. We'll look forward to that a little bit later on in the show, but right now it's all about this man, the down and dirty tractor. Let's see what Michael Stewart can do with those four Hemis he's got out front. Boy, that thing's singing a song, slinging some dirt and setting a mark that's awful hard to beat. 328 feet to be exact. It is 328.65, and this one was all but perfect. You know, it's amazing. He comes out here, the first one in the class. He's got perfect weight transfer. Look at that. The front tire just a little bit off the ground, just dangling out there, getting good transfer of that 7,700 pounds back to those rear tires, just really hooking it up and showing the sled who's boss. Michael Stewart, 328 with a 65. It's got to be a good run. It was a real nice run. Couldn't have done any better. Except for that dirt in your eyes, let's say, at the end of the pool. Yeah, it'd been nice if the dirt had stayed behind it instead of in front of it. <laughs> but that's the way it goes. You roll with it, huh? That's right. Dirt's coming and the sled's coming too. The Lucas Oil rules of the pool. The full pull line to be determined after five competitors compete. The sled transfer weight going to start out at 58,000 pounds. And by, by the time they get finished, it'll be 200,000 pounds down there at the end. Three different types of motors you can run in this class. You can run three T64 turbines. You could also put a configuration together of automotive reciprocating engines. Or you could take your chances with industrial motors. Simple as that. Steve Bonnage is up next, takes a licking, and keeps on ticking out of Golden Gate, Illinois. Well, and you'll notice that these motors hook outboardly. The front two hook together, the second two hook together, and then into a gearbox and back the drivetrain to those rear tires. And Bonnage checking up a little bit early right there. Looks like he has some issues. He'll check up way short. Looks like he shut that one down at 298 feet. And if I'm not mistaken, it looked like I possibly saw a fuel line come loose on this one. He had some fuel problems early on. You can see shooting ducks, extra fuel not being burnt off in the cylinders, going up in the air. He gets that straightened out as he gets a little bit closer to full throttle. And then that hose flew off there at the end. That was a fuel line down one motor. That means he's down 2,000 horsepower and really going to hurt him. Stay with us. We've just gotten warmed up with the Super Mods here on ESPN2. This telecast is brought to you by Lucas Oil Products, made in America, sold to the world. 
Dixie Chopper, the world's fastest lawnmower. And by Fathead Sunglasses, size does matter. Welcome back to the Dixie Chopper Summer Heat. We're here at Lucas Oil Speedway in Wheatland, Missouri. Let's check in with Crash. You're looking at the General Electric T64, well, at least one of the three for Bill Leishner. These things are crazy. You're crazy, Bill, for driving this. How much horsepower you got going on? Oh, they're about 2,800 horse apiece. And how long does it take to fire them up when you're on the line? Oh, actually, there's six little turbines on here. We got a starter turbine for each big turbine. That little turbine will start quick, and it takes it about 30 seconds to start this GET64-B. And you have to do them each at a time? Well, if you get better, you can try to start them and watch all the gauges and do them at once, but it's better <laughs> to start one, make sure it's up and run, and start the next. That's the, the best way and safest way, start them one at a time. And you haven't even done the pull yet. There's so much involved here, Bill. I could spend an entire show with you, but let's just take it to the track. Go all get right. them. Appreciate it. Thank you. And of course, Bill, a multi-time champion in this category, but he debuted this tractor a year ago with the turbines. All the championships have come with the automotive style Aries power plant that he has. We'll see that tractor later on. You hear the whistle come up, and then it gets quiet right before those turbines launch. And that little whine that you heard when he first took off was actually the sound of the tires digging into the dirt. It was not the engine of the tractor, but right there at the very end, they started to pop a bit. Lots of problems there. A little bit extra kerosene and gasoline burning off at the end. And you talk about those amazing tire speeds. We're looking at over 140 miles per hour, the speed of the, those tires are going back there. He's got a good lift. He's got a good run going. And then he ends up a motor down towards the end. Boy, and you can see the sidewall and those huge tires just wrinkling up as they try to get as much traction as possible. The front end dangling here just a little bit, maybe a little too high as it sets back down. So a tough pull there for the multi-time champion, Bill Leishner. We'll continue on here. Justin Gallion with a lot of dirt out of Edmond, Oklahoma. A three-engine combination. Let's talk about the superchargers here. And the superchargers on the three-engine tractor is allowed to be a little bit bigger. These guys run in 1471 superchargers so they can compress more air down into the engine. A unique style injector hat on the top of each one of those power plants, 301 feet. Very respectable pull, but it's not going to be enough to take the lead here today. And that's the challenge that a three-engine tractor has. They're running a little bit less horsepower than some of the other guys that have the T-64s, the DT-466s, and the automotive reciprocating engines. He gets a good hole shot off the line. You can see there's a lot of dirt spinning behind those tires. Good frame flex and torque getting the front end up just a little bit. Maybe just not the gear setting he was needing. That's kind of wild. These three engines make about the same horsepower as those three turbines that we saw before, but they make it in a different manner with different forms of torque. You can really see the chassis flexing on this one as they're trying to apply it to both rear tires. The butterflies wide open, let you know all the fuel pouring down into the supercharger to lube it up a little bit and just keep that fuel burning into the motor. Let's go back to another four engine tractor, Kurt Stevens with the Wheatland Express out of Lewisburg, Kansas. And it's amazing how many different configurations you can have with a four engine tractor. This is the third different configuration out of the three that we've seen. And it's all how you hook it up to the rear end and you pour the power down through those 30.5 inch tires. And he has some problems right off the bat, 248 feet well short of anything that will be required to win here today. And he started edging off towards the sideline, getting on the brake, and then realized he had some problems and shut it down early. The extra fuel coming out of the cylinders, never a good sign. You want as much of that fuel to be burned off in there as possible to create maximum combustion and horsepower. And that white puff of smoke is raw fuel that is not being burned. That's exactly what you're talking about there, Leslie. And we should also tell the fans at home that the full pull mark has been set at 310 feet. So, so far, one tractor out of the gate. And that would be the down and dirty. But LD Nation coming up here again, the turbine combination. Just listen in as they spool up and get quiet right before they take off. Really cool sound when you can hear those tires. And the Indian Outlaw laying up a little short, 305 feet. He just had a problem playing pole right here. And we're going to go on board, Leslie. 
this view from the top of the roll cage, and that's LD Nation's helmet. You can see it is nothing but a wild ride inside there as it's rocking them back and forth. Spectacular ride, no doubt. Not a game for the faint of heart. Here's another look at the Indian Outlaw. Sawing at the wheel. Them front tires are way up in the air, though. Didn't do any good to steer that one. He hung on as long as he could. Once again, we're going to go back down to crash. Pulling just over 300 feet. How was the run for you? Well, the run wasn't good enough because I should have went 310 and been in a pull-off, but whenever you stop, you just unhook and, you know, you're done. You just come out here and kind of lick your wounds. That's what I'm going to have to do today, just lick my wounds and go back next week, see if I can beat him. LD is a colorful character, and this is a colorful tractor, one of the brightest on the tour. Sean Swearingen with the Joker. It's a beautiful machine. You're looking at four supercharged engines for Sean Swearingen, and you didn't have four last year, and you didn't have four the year before. Why the changes, and what did you have these last couple of years? Well, two years ago, we started off with two motors, two Hemis. Last year, we had three. This year, we've had four. We've just continued to step up through the ranks to compete with the, uh, the upper levels of the class. I think we finally made the top. Okay, but that can't be easy when you make changes year after year after year to keep up. No, it's been a constant struggle trying to come up with a tune-up and a setup, and we're still struggling with it, but I think we're starting to dial it in a little closer. Okay, well, go get them. Struggle or not, go get them today. We're going to try. Thank you very much. And believe it or not, I think the four-engine combination is actually a little bit easier on the engines. The big superchargers on three really stress in the engine, the power plant itself. And you can see that flex on the chassis, new technology helping out with that, so it's not as hard on the rear end. Oh, and he kills one right there at the very end. That left front engine went away. I think the pull was just about done as he had pulled up there, but he's not going to get the lead. He may have taken the lead if he'd had that additional motor firing out there. You can see it's going tough. The dirt is flying, and then the white smoke problems in the cylinder usually means the cylinder down, and he needed all four to reach that 310 focal mark. Okay, next competitor, Tim Howe with a turbulent toy out of Wilmington, Ohio. Another threesome of T64 turbines out here. These things, remember, 2,800 horsepower a piece, so really pouring it to those rear tires. Truck loads of dirt being thrown at that sled. Those rear tires working hard, and the turbulent toy just sneaking over the full pole mark at 310 feet, 0.62. We're riding on the Dixie Chopper box, and check out how fast it tops off and drops that pan, and that's what's helping push up all that dirt. Those tires over there just don't want to quit. And the pull-off by about seven inches. Imagine that. That is how tight this game is. And we'll have more action with the Super Mods when we come back. You're watching the Lucas Oil Pro Pulling League. Watching the Dixie Chopper's Summer Heat presented by Fathead Sunglasses. Let's go back down to crash. Welcome back to Lucas Oil Speedway and the Lucas Oil Pro Pulling League. We're just about done cleaning up the track here. We got a lot more racing, actually pulling, coming up right now. Thanks a lot, Crash. And here's one of these unique looking tractors that's worked its way in. John Evans with a tractor called Double Stuff, and it has two of those GT motors. Those are DT-466 industrial motors. International used them in everything from semi-trucks to bulldozers to tractors, and they are high horsepower alcohol machines now. Nothing like what they were when they were out in the field. Making about 3,000 horsepower a piece, you would think well shy of some of the other tractors that are out here, but at 319 feet, he got everything out of that one. Well, in this class, it's not how much horsepower you have, it's how you can hook it up to the track. And even though he's running at 6,000 horse, he still knows how to make good use of it and pour it onto the rear tires. It does a good job getting the boost pressure up. You can see the intake on those two turbos out there pouring air into the third additional turbo and making it happen. Next up, Scott Tedder and the Mr. Twister out of Eaton, Indiana. Another configuration of four super-powered Hemis out there. Oh, 
almost something giving up on it. You can hear that one just die away. 270.15 feet. And normally when you hear it die away like that, that means that the pilot has started to get out of the throttle to keep the damage at a minimum as these things are hooked up together. You can see he's got some fuel problems right off the bat. A lot of extra fuel being burned out, those little clouds that you see right above the headers. And he's got good torque, but just can't seem to get it hooked up and keep the front end up in the air like he needs it, and then he lets out of it. Well, we told you about the Texas Bullwhip and the unique combination. Don Nelson, the driver, it has two Chevys, obviously facing outwards, and then right in the center of the front, one of those DT 466s. And you can hear the rumble of that DT 466 out front singing along right with the Chevys. And he's on one right here, bringing it home 320 feet. So we have four tractors now out over the full pull mark of 310 feet, and we will have one heck of a pull off. Look at the glide of the front end up in the air. That's exactly what you want to do. You want to get that nice angle 10 to 14 inches off the ground is what you want your front end. Well, we told you that Bill Leichner had a couple of different tractors. Here is the one that he's won all the championships with. Four big, bad Aries motors. This is the only time that you'll see him out here on the track. Nobody else on the Lucas Oil Pro Pulling Lake Circuit runs Aries machines. there in the blower hat too. He has those injector hats and the butterflies are wide open. There's no filters there. Might want to talk to k and about that. But that was a lot of dirt going down into those back engines. You can see he clears out the fuel early, gets the front end up right away. Now, he's got something unique going on because he's got reverse rotation on these motors and that's why you don't see a lot of frame flex with him. You see the front end kind of straight up in the air each other to kind of keep that from happening. 319 feet, he's in the pull-off as well, and that's next. Stay with us. This telecast is brought to you by RL Carriers. One call, one carrier. Jim B, the official spirit of racing. And by Super Clean. Not just clean, super clean. We're back with the Dixie Chopper Summer Heat here at Wheatland, Missouri, presented by Fathead Sunglasses. All right, let's show you the pulling order here for the pull-off in the super modified category. You can take a look at the guy on top, 328.65 feet, the down and dirty. But a couple more tractors out there at 320, a couple of 319s, and of course the 310 by the Turbulent Toy just sneaking in. But everybody has been chasing the down and dirty all day long. When a key factor here for Michael Stewart, he's had a lot of time for his motors to cool down, and those Hemis are cool, and he should be hot and ready to go. They have adjusted the sled, so it's going to appear to be a bit heavier to these tractors, but another spectacular pull at 312.54 feet. He has set the bar on. You know, Michael Stewart just really figured it out here today at the Lucas Oil Speedway. He goes full throttle early, great weight transfer, good decisions made by his team as far as setting up the weight on this 7,700-pound machine. He doesn't let out of it as the dirt shower gets him, and he keeps an eye on that finished flagman to tell him when to quit. All right, will Tim Howe have anything for him with turbulent joy? I would think since they have adjusted the sled, that he's going to have to make some adjustments to his tractor to get out to that 312 mark because he only went 310 earlier today. Well, and these guys all know when there have been adjustments made to the sled, so they may pick up another gear and try to get that gear setting right here for the new sled setting. Well, he's slowing down way too early here in the pull-off to get a win. 252 feet will be good for second place right now, but there's some really tough trackers yet behind him. Well, and you see a little bit of smoke early coming from the turbulent toy, and that can only mean problems for him out here. The center and the driver's left motor smoking there at the end, and that could be what's holding him back. A good effort in the first pull, second pull. A little bit tired right there. He'll lay up well short of the lead. We'll continue on here with the double stuff. John Evans, again, 
just those two engines producing somewhere in the area of 6,000 horsepower, which sounds like a lot, but it's well short of the 8,500 plus horsepower we see out of some of these other guys. And John Evans back in the pits with the leaf blower trying to cool down these motors because it hasn't been that long since he made his last pass. And he was on the brakes a couple times there. Still goes 311 feet. 311.63 is less than one foot short of the 312.54. If he didn't have to get on the brakes, he would have taken the lead. Off to a great start, and then he gets too much grip on that side of the track and has to get on the brakes, and you're right, Ken. That really hurts him. What an amazing run. John Evans, 311 and some change. Will that hold on this pull-off? Yeah, I think, I think I'll keep the second place. I, I, I got beat, I believe, by a foot, but uh, I had to get on the brakes. But uh, down and dirty, he had a good, good hook, and what can you say, man? <laughs> what can I say is that he's a teenager. You can't, like, get beat by a teenager. <laughs> Hey, them teenagers, they're bad. <laughs> you got to watch them. <laughs> well, he's right. Dan and Dirty's been bad all day long. Very good effort, though. And up next will be Don Nelson with the Texas Bullwhip. Don't ever count this guy out. Listen to the rumble of that DT-466. Here come the Chevy. Oh, and he's got some issues right there. Maybe some driveline issues, or he lost an engine. Sounds like one of the motors is buzzing up there a little bit, so he's going to lay up well short as well. We should also tell you that the dirt slinger was broken and not able to come back. So this is our final pull. And you're exactly right on the funky sound back there. The Texas Bullwhip has been having problems losing one of those Chevrolet motors in the back, and I think that's exactly what happened to him today. There it is. Don't mess with Texas, but today the track didn't want you messing with it. What happened? Oh... Track was fine. The tractor um, got one clutch slipping really bad on the Chevrolet, so I couldn't put full power to it. I had to just play with the throttle all the way down in the pull-off. Do you know? Do the best I could. But at least you made it to the pull-off. It was getting there that was half the battle. Yes, it did. It made a good, nice pass. The uh, first round, real satisfied with that. Just have to do a little clutch work. And here's a look at the final order for the tractors in the pull-off. Congratulations to Michael Stewart with the down and dirty. 312.54 is what you needed to win here today, and he got the job done. Winner in Super Modified Tractor in a pull-off. Michael, congratulations. You got it done. Thank you very much. We had a hard class, but we pulled through and got it won. Yes, you did pull through. That was a very, what was it, 312, I believe, was your distance. I don't know. That's what I've been told. <laughs> that's, that's the winning distance. That's all that matters, right? That's all that matters. We all got right. the trophy. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, here is our general tire hook of the day. You know, Michael Stewart straight line down the track, got it going on, pouring on the horsepower. Couldn't be done by a veteran any better. Hope you had a great time. This telecast has been produced by Lucas Oil Studios in association with ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Crash Gladys and Leslie Mayers, I'm Ken Stout. Thanks for watching the Lucas Oil Pro Pulling League.